The brain is dynamic, so alive, so many connections, so many tasks being done all at once, remotely, whatever is needed. The brain is a living miracle, and we're getting closer to understanding the brain both biologically and chemically, thanks to remarkable advances by dedicated, innovative, and open-minded scientists like Dr. Patricia Broderick. Dr. Broderick is a medical professor in molecular, cellular, and biomedical science at the City University of New York School of Medicine and professor in neurology at NYU Langone Medical Center. She is also founder of EasySense Nanotechnologies Incorporated. Dr. Broderick has actually invented, patented, and trademarked a revolutionary technology that will change the way we understand the brain. Even published medical doctors have stated that the Broderick probe will change the face of science and medicine. Dr. Broderick has spent a career working on neurodegenerative diseases like epilepsy and Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, as well as biopsychiatric conditions like anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, and schizoaffective disorders. Dr. Broderick says some people study the brain, but she wanted to sense the neurotransmitters in the brain to see what's going on in the natural state and then compare the differences in neurochemistry with the brain disorder that they want to heal. Neurotransmitters include things like dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin, which indicate all manner of information regarding the health of our brain. With Dr. Broderick's technology, it's now possible to see neurotransmitters as they are released online, in real time, coming from our brains. Signals are seen on the computer and even on a mobile device. It's incredible. I'm Jim Masters, CU TV News. I recently had the opportunity to visit with Dr. Patricia Broderick at her lab at the City University of New York's School of Medicine to learn more about her remarkable work and the amazing Broderick Probe. Dr. Broderick, you've been described as one of the world's leading scientists, almost as a, a dynamite stick because you just don't stop. You're always inventing and thinking and researching and creating. When did you first develop this keen interest that you have in the study of the brain? I first got started because I was extremely interested in why people become mentally ill. I wanted to know why people behave the way they do. I wanted to know if anything can be changed in a person's brain. Can, I'll say it straight out, can a really nasty person <laughs> become nice? Uh, can a really nice person become nasty? I just, it fascinated me why people uh, are the way they are and why we behave. Then I had the thought to become a scholar because it has always been my desire to be a scholar. I felt that I should be contributing to science in a way that was much more profound than what I was doing, but at the same time teaching and having a place in the minds of the beautiful people who are growing up. I was encouraged to study from my doctorate, Dr. Nathan Klein, the famous Dr. Nathan Klein. What a fabulous man. I wanted to study why people are mentally ill. That, that is what Dr. Nathan Klein did. He started that. He was the first psychiatrist or in the forefront of the first scientists who believed there has to be chemistry involved. And he wrote this paperback book, From Sad to Glad. So he was the first, we call them the pharmacological cowboys. You know, the ones who were daring enough to say, there's something chemically wrong with the brain. Now, I sent people to Dr. Nathan Klein to visit his psychiatric institute because I wanted to know what caused psychosis. Now you began your career as a senior scientist at USV Pharmaceutical. Tell us about that and then where things went for you in your career from there. Well, you see from my PhD thesis, 
Dr. Peter Savoni from a USB Pharmaceutical was called in by uh, Dr. Lynch as an expert. Uh, he brought in lots and lots of experts at my PhD thesis, not just the people in the school, you know, in the committee in the school. I brought in all these other people. He brought in Dr. Savoni, he brought in Dr. Indu Sangvi, um, because he wanted me to be senior scientist there. He wanted to show that I was at the top of the game in every way. I showed it, and then these people from Dr. Savoni and Dr. Sangvi, they said, we want her here. We want her here in industry. How did you get from there to here and some of the incredible things you've been working on in this almost 30 years here at the school? I thought to myself, I'm in industry now. I need to be in the academe because I need to be teaching. I miss it. Uh, so I called Dr. Uh, Bridger in psychiatry in the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and Dr. Perfera, who started the whole Society for Neuroscience. Um, he said, we, we heard about you, come right over for an interview. So there's four years in the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. And then Cornell University. And then the faculty position at the City University of New York Medical School. And I really want to study the human being alive and walking around. I want to see what's going on inside that brain. Normal, natural. For example, we studied Alzheimer's by asking the family if he could please take the brain of the deceased person out. And I said, that's so wonderful, but it's not good enough. It, we have to go in live. It's not good enough. And then at, at the same time, all of the animal studies were being done the same way. Even the animals were being sacrificed and that was really bothering me. So I, I vowed, I just vowed, I said I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the spectroscopy, I'm going to learn everything myself. I did all of the behavioral tests and swim tests, I'm going to learn everything, teach everything to myself, I'm going to be original uh, and all of that and I am going to go into the brain lot because the dead brain is not anything like the live brain. You really do believe the brain is a miracle, don't you? We're sort of getting closer to the understanding of the brain through your efforts. In this environment where we are right now, we actually manufacture original sensors that are not manufactured anywhere else that are patented and trademarked by us and the City University of New York School of Medicine and City College and NYU School of Medicine uh, and the Technology Commercialization Office. I'm working with them with the company Easy Sense Nanotechnologies. Day to day in this lab, we are doing the science of advanced materials. And we are seeing what carbon can do. And we are seeing how carbon can be manipulated to actually see inside the brain. We are actually designing and manufacturing brand new carbon sensors uh, that are made up of thousands of formulas, thousands of different formulas that do different things. We're doing that plus we're taking those sensors and we are studying Parkinson's with Lewy body Alzheimer's. We are studying stroke. We are studying epilepsy. We have uh, 
We are already successful in NYU Langone Medical Center and Tisch Hospital in the human epilepsy patient who has temporal lobe epilepsy. There's a whole group of people studying sensors. All right, I work with them, with the sensors people. I work with the brain people. What is different about our work here, okay, and everybody else's work? Well, some are studying the brain, some are studying the sensing devices, but I'm the only one who was able to study sensors and take the sensors and have them sense the brain. Move away from post-mortem altogether. And this tiny probe, smaller than a human hair, it's named after my father. It's called the Broderick probe. It is named after my father, not me. That was invented here. Started in the Albert Einstein College of Medicine after leaving USV Pharmaceutical to be back in academia because I love school. I love school. And I also love industry. So now I have easy sense technology. So where I have our own industry that belongs here in, in City University, it belongs to all of my students. Everything that I do will be shared. They share, I share, we want to share with the world. You also developed the Broderick Brain Foundation. Tell us a little bit about the importance of the foundation and some of the work that you do. We've had the Broderick Brain Foundation Ooh, I guess since 2000, since 2000, and many, many students have come from this lab and gone all over the world and become famous all over the world because of their own uh, ingenuity, their own competence, their own creativity, and all of the work that they have done here and being creative here. This is a totally creative lab. Now we're talking also about this company that you formed. Uh, you are the founder and then there's a co-founder as well called Easy Sense Nanotechnologies. What is the company and is the Broderick Probe the one and only thing that the company has uh, created or are there several other products that Easy Sense Nanotechnologies also represents? Okay, so I started the Broderick Brain Foundation first, why? Because I wanted to share with my students the joy it is to be giving presentations all over the world. So my students give presentations all over the world thanks to the Broderick Brain Foundation. Okay, then I, I developed along with all of my colleagues the Broderick Probe, okay? Um, then I said, we, many people wanted me to teach them. I needed to be cloned. I didn't get to the cloning yet. So the next best step is to get a company, which uh, Stephen and I called Easy Sense Nanotechnologies. Because this technology now uh, should not be with another company as an add-on to something else because this is too big. In the last week alone, 92 papers have cited the Broderick work. The Broderick work is being, all of the work since the very beginning, my very first censor paper was published in 1988. That's being cited. I said, now it's time. Timing is of the essence. Now I know this. we should have our own company. I talked with the universe, of, uh, our university here about it, and we have Easy Sense Nanotechnologies. And uh, uh, Easy Sense will own all of the patents, but not all of the money, because of course we must share with the City University of New York. Well, that's the nature of the game of being successful. Why did India specifically invest in Easy Sense nanotechnology? What was it about India that attracted them to your research and your company? The reason that India wants to invest is because 
um, for the Prime Minister, Modi, uh, wants India to be a king of technology. And of course, to be the king of technology, you have to be the king of nanotechnology, because that is where the future is. Sensing is the future. Um, and they would also want to invest because the profit margin is huge. One probe costs uh, only, are you ready? A dollar eighty-four. A dollar eighty-four is what the cost of the Broderick probe is. One dollar eighty-four cents. That is absolutely incredible. That is absolutely amazing. The Broderick probe is going to become a household name, okay? Uh, it will be in hospitals. It will be in clinics. It will be in schools for educating purposes. Naturally, the hospitals and the clinics, the doctor's office as well. Is this the kind of thing that can possibly even eradicate certain illnesses and diseases? Did you want to actually take that leap to say something like that? Jim, it does have the potential to eradicate disease, yes. And the medical doctors have written in the press releases that this the will, this technology, this easy sense nanotechnologies incorporated will actually change the face of science and medicine. This truly is cutting edge science, innovative, life-changing, and offering hope to millions. Dr. Patricia Broderick has brought science and medicine to the forefront of the millennium and beyond. She's also in the process of writing a new book titled Neuroimaging, Nanosensing Biochemistry in the Brain. If you'd like to learn more about Dr. Patricia Broderick, the Broderick Probe, and EasySense Nanotechnologies, you can visit her online. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Masters, CUTV News.